And um, the specs for this camera are uh, very interesting. And uh, we can dive straight into this video. And so um, what we're seeing here, especially with this new Canon camera, is po the potential inclusion of 4K video, right? And recently, the Canon G7X, you can see it there, 4K, 30, 20, and uh, 25P plus full HD in slow motion in that lower right-hand corner, right? And... Um, historically, though, as Canon has been putting 4K into cameras, um, they um, have been, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the live. We had a little technical difficulties before, but we're back in it. Billy, Alex, Aaron, what up? Uh, hit the like button so we can get this shared out, and hopefully it's working. And so the question is, is it going to be cropped like it is on the EOS R? Is it going to be cropped in like it is on some of these other cameras um, and uh, that Canon's been putting out? But what's interesting is they just released the Canon G7X Mark III, and the 4K on it actually is beautiful. It's no crop at all. It's like kind of a full sensor readout. It has a 10-minute record limit, and it also has overheating problems. That's the G7X Mark III. So that has me pretty optimistic that on the new Canon 90D, that when it comes out, I think that they might surprise us um, with what's possible with the 4K. But let's go through a list of the specs and uh, let me know if you have any questions if you're here live. And so the new camera is um, just dropping. You can see it here. A linked promo video reveals major specs of the upcoming Canon 90D and the M6. And um, it should be being announced very soon, probably within the next couple of weeks. We don't know prices yet, um, but we should be seeing those uh, very soon. And um, here's a couple things that you get. The this website's actually a little bit wrong, but you've got a here we go. You've got a 32 megapixel um, new sensor, APS-C sensor, 32.5 megapixels, and that is the largest sensor megapixel wise of any APS-C camera in history. And the M6, this is the Mark One. Um, is also it looks like it's going to have that same sensor. You've got a brand new processor in there as well, and so everything should be faster from the touchscreen to uh, the fact that um, everything should load faster. And using this the G7X Mark III already, it is a snappy camera with the processing power. But let's keep going. And so you've got the new processor. Um, you've got eye detection now. I've heard some things that may or may not be great, uh, but I think uh, that is a very cool feature, and it may only really exist in photo mode. We don't, we're not really sure if if eye detection will be in video mode. Um, you can do up to ten frames a second in photography, so that's a great improvement there. You've got an optical viewfinder, right? And so that's a big difference with DSLRs in general. Mirrorless cameras can't have optical viewfinders; they have uh, like digital viewfinders that are reproducing the image digitally, where in this case, a single lens reflex is the fact that the image goes into the camera to a mirror and it comes up to your actual viewfinder. So you're seeing what you're seeing and able to take pictures. That's one of the major differences, of course, of a DSLR. Um, you've got these 45 cross point autofocus points. Now, it's something to note that some people think, well, this only has 45 autofocus points and the Sony has like 400, but that's a little bit confusing because with dual pixel autofocus, you're actually, I don't fully understand it, but all the pixels in the 32 megapixels can work together, not quite to the edge of it, but to find two pixels, focus fast, like if you've got me here and the mic here, and you tap where it is, it goes fast to the mic. So all that to say is the autofocus should be amazing, and hopefully it has dual pixel autofocus in 4K. Um, and the general autofocus and the zone points and the ability to touch the screen and all of that kind of stuff is massive. Um, if you've used the ADD before, it was just a solid camera to be able to select certain areas uh, when you're shooting, tap the screen, if you've used a Canon 70D or an ADD. But even as you see here, it's pretty cool looking with um, how you sort of see this tracking as she's walking forward with the horse. And again, hoping that it, it really follows. I'm sure in 1080p, it's going to just be fire, you know, tracking. But if we see all that features in 4K, that will be absolutely Amazing. Um, you've got again the huge sensor, 
And that means that if you're going to blow up your photos or you just want to have massive details in your photos for cropping in, I think that's a pretty cool thing on an APS-C sensor camera. You've got the new processor, so everything should be snappy and fast. And there it is telling us all about the dual pixel CMOS AF with the eye detection and the 4K. And uh, who knows if that's a real example, but if the 4K is great, it should be absolutely amazing. And there was a little uh, call out too, dust and water resistant. You know, I think it's one thing to note about the um, uh, Canon 80D and what's cool about the 90D is versus say the Canon M50. Um, plastic camera, love it, um, but not really meant to like take into the jungle with you, you know, as much for like really hammering, putting work on it. Or you got the Canon, uh, the Sony a6400, solid camera, but you know, not really like a weatherproof camera. And um, the, it doesn't quite have the rubber kind of durability that we should expect in the 90D. So that's one of those features, having kind of a weather-sealed, rugged construction. Even versus the new M6 that's going to come out is, again, not going to be as weatherproof, durable kind of build as what we could expect in the 90D. Some kind of a new battery grip that they're putting out there. And uh, that's cool if, you know, want to pop the two batteries in there. You get that extra shutter button. Of course, the ability to transfer uh, data to smart devices. That's been around, though. We've had that. So very cool. It's probably a little bit faster. And so the Canon EOS 90D, it's dropping. I think we should see a full announcement. It probably is going to be available for pre-order within days. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What do you think about... Um, the 90D so far. Fitness lover Brian, good to see you. Nancy, good to see you. And I wrote down a few things um, that I want to kind of talk about. But one other thing to note here, as of course there's a lot of criticism about how Canon typically cripples their cameras to get full 4K on like a full frame sensor. You, you got to spend like thousands, like tens of thousands on like their full cinema camera. And as it comes down to even the EOS R or the EOS RP, it's usually cropping in and there's different sampling. Some people are saying the way they read the specs of the uh, the new 90D, they think it's just going to be up sampled 1080. I don't think that's going to be true. We're going to have to wait to see once people get their hands on them and do tests. And again, because of what I've seen in the 5D or the, uh, can the, the new G7X Mark III, I'm optimistic that get Canon will put proper 4K in there. And because it'll be a bigger body, I don't think, you know, hopefully it doesn't have overheating issues. And so um, let's talk about it. Now, one thing before we get into that, there's another thing to, uh, to uh, that Canon mentioned recently. They said they're going to be joining the specs war. And so the fact of the matter is can uh, camera ca companies like Sony have been absolutely uh, far and ahead of Canon, especially in terms of price point. They're giving some of their best features in more affordable bodies, like the Sony A6400 at $900 for just the body. You're getting just incredible features in there that you might find in Canon, but you have to spend so much more to get them. And as the camera models um, that are lower down for Canon, uh, they're less oftentimes crippled and they hold back features. But what's interesting is reading some of these articles, Canon mentioned they're going to be joining this the specs war. And even specifically, the new Sony camera that's got a massive 61 megapixel um, uh, full frame camera, they said, and I quote, that um, Canon will return to the top of the megapixel count for, for, for full frame sensors. They said that their technology right here has caught up to Sony. They have new sensor technology, but they haven't really elaborated on that. There's um, Canon is ready to jump back into the spec war with guns blazing. Now, that might not be in the 90D, it could be, though, with the crispy 4K and they, if they deliver like the real value there once we see it. Um, but it's definitely you can see Canon going in and I think they're going to be adding IBIS and a few, you know, in-body image stabilization, which everybody wants um, uh, as well to some future cameras. So I think that even though it's like Sony's kind of had this lead that maybe Canon's trajectory is going to try to catch up soon. That's sort of the feeling that. I'm getting. So let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you are planning on upgrading your camera this year. Hit me up in the comment section below. A few, um, let me talk about the specs really quick, do a few um, 
thoughts I have, and then uh, we will be done. And then also, really quick, if you are actually curious too, I'm curious if you're planning on upgrading your camera, um, if you actually want to just know my best recommendations and at, with Omar on the team and Nolan and Heather, the cameras we're testing, the cameras we love the most right now, we actually have like a video tutorial and uh, our new Think uh, gear guide out where we've uh, just list out our favorite gear. Right now, my two top picks for YouTube are still the Canon M50. Come on, who's with me? Smash like for the M50. I think it's one of the best value propositions. You got the flip screen to the side or the Sony a6400. Um, if you're asking me about the best camera for YouTube and kind of the best value out there, we've got a video out where we put those two head to head and I think that both are so incredible, a good choice to this day. And what excites me about new cameras hitting the market is that these great cameras will potentially have the price driven down or maybe some people will sell theirs on eBay or Craigslist or you know wherever and you can potentially get a deal on some great cameras like the M50 or like the A6400. And so hit me up in the comments, let me know what camera you're using right now, are you planning on upgrading? And if you want to um, know all of my best camera recommendations, you can grab our um, Think Gear Guide there's a link in the description or just go to thinkgearguide.com. But let's talk about the specs really quick and I think some of the pros and cons of this new camera. First of all, a lot of haters, man, a lot of Canon haters and I, I get it. But uh, I think one of the first things is gonna be the headphone jack. The Canon ADD has a headphone jack. One of the reasons why the Canon ADD is such a favorite camera of video creators is because it's kind of, got almost everything video creators have needed. And I know people are so critical, but this has been a workout horse, man. People are making money, they're building their business, they're shooting promo videos and commercial videos and vlogs and content with ADDs for the last few years. Someone uh, from the Think Media I just saw in the comments just bought an ADD. I wouldn't feel bad about that. Like it's a great camera, right? It's really solid. So you're gonna have updated processor, hopefully updated great features with 4K and slow motion, whatever, and so, headphone jack. The M6, which is the other new camera that Sony announced um, as a mirrorless camera, that doesn't have, uh, it's probably not going to have a headphone jack. This video dropped as well. It's basically kind of the 90D in a mirrorless package, based, you know, pretty much the same settings. It can shoot more frames per second because it's mirrorless. Um, but that's going to be a big difference. It's not going to have that same weatherproofing that the 90D has and it's probably not gonna have a headphone jack. Secondly, lens selection. If there's maybe any reason why you should get the Canon 90D, um, if you are thinking about upgrading, is if you're committed to Canon lenses. I mean, Canon lenses are not, you, you may already have a lot, they're in abundance. If people are, are moving from Canon or, or changing whatever they're doing, they're so available. They're available secondhand, used, refurbished. There's so much different glass. And one of the th problems you run into with like the Canon mirrorless line, very limited lenses for like the M50 and, this, and the M6, same thing, same mount. And of course you can use an adapter, but then it bulks it up and makes it a little bit bigger. You go straight to the 90D with the EF mount and you got all of Canon's lenses. So if you're already committed to Canon, it's one thing that's excited me. I've been a Canon shooter for so many years that I've got, I still have all these Canon lenses and I'm like, praying for the future that it's like, no, Canon's gonna be in the spec war, man, and, and I think we could see some major moves happening um, in the industry, so we'll see. Lens selection. Next one's flip screen. There's just something about the flip to the side, greatest flip screens in the game, greatest touch screen in the game, most user-friendly, enjoyable camera experience in the game, period. I've been testing out the new uh, Sony A1, the <laughs> RX100, so many camera model names, RX107. And it kinda has touchscreen, but navigating the menus, I mean, you get faster at it, but it's just nothing like Canon. And so the flip screen for the vlog, for the ability to just put the camera on top, you don't need any like weird relocation plates, like I have to do this on the Sony because the screen's in the way. If you get the new M6 Mark II, you can't put a mic up there. There's also gonna be like a, a, an optional optical viewfinder thing or digital, whatever. And then you got, you know, you gotta move that out of the way for the flip screen. So I think that the flip screen to the side and the practicality and usability, headphone jack, 
is, is definitely something to look at. And then, of course, weatherproofing. You know, um, maybe that's if, if you plan on shooting and, and really, if you plan on just using your camera inside and never taking it outside, then it doesn't, none of that stuff matters. But if you plan on like you're running a video production company and you're gonna like be hammering on the camera, then that weatherproofing um, and build quality could matter. Now, really quick before we get to a few cons, would be what are what are the benefits of even a DSLR? Like why even get a DSLR in the world of mirrorless cameras? Well, a couple reasons. One, optical viewfinders. That is one thing that DSLRs have if you want that, right? And, and you wanna be able to really look at whatever you're looking at actually and not a reproduction through digital. Also battery life. You know, the Canon um, battery life has oftentimes been superior to Sony. But you've just got a bigger form factor generally, and so battery life in a DSLR. The form factor itself, mirrorless advantage is that they're much smaller, like much leaner bodies. But uh, maybe a lot of photographers, a lot of videographers like to have more kind of in their hand. There's actually nothing that quite feels like this feels. Like this is actually how I envision, I mean, it's what I grew up with, you know, just this Canon bodies, my first DSLR when I started my company back in 2009 was a Canon 7D and you just love it, just shooting and, and everything you could do with that. So you might want it smaller and lighter as a mirrorless camera, but if you want the bigger build quality, you've got that. And then the other benefits are the unlimited lenses. It's nonstop and uh, reactivating old lenses. Now the questions, and I feel like the kind of make or break if you need these features, and that's the question to ask yourself if you're planning on upgrading, what features do I really need? I think for most of us, why would we even need to upgrade? A lot of people still aren't even shooting 4K. And if you don't actually need new features, you can just keep rocking the camera you have or invest in, invest in something that's like the M50 or something a little bit uh, even older because it has all the features you need. So my big questions are for the 90D, will dual pixel autofocus work in 4K? Will it be cropped or will it be like no crop at all, which would be amazing? Will it have slow motion? It has 120 frames slow motion, which is 4X slow motion um, in 30 frames when editing. And the G7X Mark III has that, but there's no autofocus. It's kind of hard to use and it overheats. In the 90D, we might see that there is autofocus and it doesn't overheat and it could be absolutely amazing. In the Sony, you've got it all, by the way. You've got slow motion. Canon doesn't allow sound with slow motion on the G7X Mark III slow mo. But here you can choose up to 60 megabytes a second or 100 megabytes. Basically, if you want all the guaranteed pro features, even right now, the A6400, and that's why um, Omar and I, you know, have really decided it's, it's to, in our opinion, still it's the A6400 um, or the M50 just for the value proposition. And M50, if you just want to create YouTube content, and A6400, if you want to really shoot some 4K that you know is going to be amazing and not compromised in any way, and slow motion, that's also going to be amazing. Um, but you may not need that. And I think we can sometimes get so into specs that um, we, you know, we just get hyped up, but we may or may not use them, right? And so let me know your questions. And of course, the questions of the day, are you planning on upgrading your camera this year? And what features are important to you right now? If you're getting value out of this video, smash the like button. And then let me just see what some of your questions are. Hey, thanks so much for the super ch uh, chat, Brian. Maybe I missed it, but the 90D is keeping 24 frames a second. So uh, they may, that'd be crazy if they removed it. I know they've been removing 24 frames from cameras. Brian, that would be a deal breaker. I don't think they're gonna do that, man. I mean, um, because it is a, more of a filmmaker's, at least the ADD was, was more of a filmmaker's camera and filmmakers and those that want that cinematic look, of course, want 24P, but let me know. And on the flip side, I think that Canon's also, they're just being weird by, by removing uh, potentially 24P. I could see maybe outrage around that and they could always add it back with firmware. Um, but, you know, as, as the era advances, if it's just directed at YouTubers and your average content creator, again, it's what do you need? I wonder if, if Canon is saying, hey, YouTube, uh, YouTubers, I know you just kind of want it simple. You want to be able to touch your face and plug in headphones to get good audio and just shoot 30 frames or 60 frames a second. And so here you go. And you'd be okay with that. Like, for example, 
I'm not really shooting cinematic 24. We just shoot everything in 30. So it's kind of a standard across the board for all of our archival, for the kind of stuff we do. So that would bother me, but I could live without it. Um, again, I'm, I'm a big A6400 guy if you want the features. And that's why we're recommending you know that. So anyways, thank you, Brian, for the super chat. Um, 65 drums, thanks for the super chat. I'm really surprised that Canon is still uh, betting on DSLRs. I thought they were going full on mirrorless when they came out with the EOS R, RP, and M50. Agree. I think that um, maybe this could be one of the last DSLRs that we see. You know, they are going to release the 1DX Mark II, I think, before the Olympics. That That's stated, and that could probably be a remarkable camera. That might be the one that has more megapixels than the Sony R4. So they're in the specs war, as they said, right? We could see that that's potentially what happens and what they were sort of saying. But I agree. It would seem to me that their full frame mirrorless line, they're most committed to. What has me kind of confused is their M50 mirrorless line. And for those that are M50 owners and that even still would want to get an M50, I would say this. It's amazing. It's such a great value proposition, but it appears like they may not make lenses for it anymore. So the lens selection is a little limited. And if there's not new lenses coming to that line, it's like, where is what's going to happen there? So you're right. Um, but then again, I think it's also important for us to have a global perspective. And man, we're so niche here, like all our, our, our little internet community that like, uh, you know, is, is uh, geeking out on specs and stuff. But like the amount of cameras sold globally, the amount of people I run into that are been shooting on ADDs like yesterday, like I was just in Dallas for Video Marketing World. I got up at 2 a.m. Vegas time to fly to be here for this live stream for you. Yeah, anyway, no, but you know, so we could hang out. Um, and that's why I'm delirious. And so, you know, I, I, I was meeting people that were, you know, still have ADDs. And so I think DSLR is still irrelevant and the body of lenses is, is pretty massive. But I agree, it seems like things are shifting towards mirrorless. So that is super fascinating. Thanks again for the super chat. If there's any other questions or thoughts, um, throw a question mark on there. Uh, how is this stream so clear? I'll put a link to, um, if you also actually, if you wanna check out our gear guide, as I mentioned, and you can also, there's a link in the description just to our setup. But uh, I talk about all my favorite kits in here, which just as an overview, this live streaming setup's pretty fancy. I talk about like a much more budget one. It's kind of crazy gear. Uh, M50, still one of my favorite cameras for YouTube right now. A6400 if you want more pro specs. One of my favorite cameras right now. And um, we talk also about smartphone accessories. And so that's at thinkgearguide.com or there's a link somewhere down in the description about everything in this live stream setup. I'll take one or more, two more questions. Smash like if you're getting value. I'm currently shooting on a 5D4. Should I get the RX100 Mark 7 or the G7X Mark 3 to complement my 5D? Well, I think that um, it depends on what you actually want it to accomplish. You know, the 5D4 has kind of uh, that massive MJPEG 4K, so I assume you're shooting in 1080. If that's the case, the G7X Mark 3 would complement it really well because the G7X Mark 3, we love it here if you want 1080. Omar just did a bunch of videos with it. Vertical, 1080, Canon's color is beautiful. Uh, you know, it, it, it's user friendly. It's just the 4K that they're crippling. And if you really know that you're shooting everything in 1080, even for the price point, just another flute guy, I think the Mark III co would complement the 5D the most. The RX100 Mark VII, I've been shooting with it. I love it. Uh, but at $1,200, it's ridiculous. Um, you're welcome. First 1,000 hours. Appreciate the super chat. Um, and... Yeah, so hey, smash like uh, if you got value out of this video. Price in the 90D, we're not sure. That's gonna be a big question because if it's a little more affordable, then maybe it's a little more relevant. If they, if they raise the price a little bit higher, I hope that the features are there to support that higher price. There's no question about it. A lot of us have so much love in our hearts for Canon and there's so many great things about them. I just hope that we see a convergence of specs and value catching up to brands like Sony. And I also, again, it sounds crazy, but just for like maybe a faster processor and the better autofocus and the new sensor and the more megapixels, a lot of people, again, globally, like a lot of people are just shooting 1080 still, right? And maybe the, the, the 60 frames a second and the 120, 
maybe it's all amazing and you just can go make some incredible films and videos in 1080. So we'll see, right? Um, and uh, how do I get 4K on the Mark III? You just go into your settings and you can turn that on. There's a 10 minute record limit. There is a few overheating issues, but I have been testing it out a lot and you can get plenty of clips. You could shoot a whole vlog in 4K. You can make the slow motion work. Uh, we do have a video on the new Nikon mirrorless, the uh, Z series or whatever, so I'll link that up on the YouTube card. And uh, Bath, uh, Barth YouTuber, link in the description to my live stream setup for you. Outdoor fams, what are your honest thoughts on daily vlog for a couple? That question will be for another day, but I appreciate it. So if you want some of my YouTube tips, make sure you're subscribed here on Think Media, and, um, and we have plenty of YouTube tips, social media, how to grow your brand faster, as well as the tools you need to build your influence. But the thought of the day and the questions of the day are, are you planning on upgrading your camera this year? You may not need to. Or maybe you're in the market for a camera. I would definitely wait for all the full details of the 90D. I think that one of the biggest battles is gonna be the 90D versus the A6400. And if we don't really see the cripple and we do see that the 4K is, is proper, that this could be the showdown. And I think that this holiday season, this could very much be the showdown 90D versus Sony A6400. Neither one of them is gonna have IBIS. We know that for sure, in-body image stabilization. But for everybody that thinks that is the holy grail, remember, people have been creating life-changing content, building million subscriber vlogs, changing, you know, impacting massive people without IBIS for years. You can have stabilization in your lenses. There's other ways around it. But uh, yeah, Richard, it's going to have 90D and uh, the 90D will have 4K. So check out the replay on that uh, to see all the details. Um, Chris, I've got a full tutorial. Search up SL2 vlog. Type in Think Media, Canon SL2 vlog. And I got a, a video about my favorite settings for the Canon SL2 for you. And uh, is the 90D better than the M50? It, it, it probably will be, and it'll also probably be almost $1,000 more expensive. You could probably get an M50 right now, body for 500, kit lens with it for 600. That might be a little cheaper, but maybe like open box or whatever, you could grab that. I'm guessing the 90D is gonna come in around $1,499. It could be maybe 13 to 16 or $1,700. You know, headphone jack, and again, this is gonna be a professional camera, weatherproof, kind of mid-prosumer professional to go create content. M50 is pretty professional too, but definitely the kind of the ultimate vlogging YouTube form factor, great camera. I'll tell you what I'm excited about, M50 Mark II Canon. I don't know if that's coming out. And then by the way, stay tuned because Sony's gonna be dropping, it looks like the A6700, and that could just blow all of our, the whole game up, you know, who knows what's happening. So a lot of stuff happening in the camera world lately. Keep it locked here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you don't miss any Think Media videos. We'll try to keep you in the know as much as possible. And um, and uh, smash like if you're getting value. And then if you wanna check out any of the other videos here on Think Media, just click or tap the screen right there for uh, some of the other videos. Thanks for checking out this video. Let me know in the comment section if you're planning on upgrading and what you think about the new Canon 90D. And I will see you in the next video. Appreciate you. Peace.